those who notice they have sensitive digestion might be flared by directly trying to feed those bacteria. But there's another way in which we can optimize the health of the world of bacteria. And that is through reducing inflammation because inflammation is actually, for lack of a better term, poisonous to the microbiota. Inflammation makes it harder for healthy bacteria to live and favors unhealthy bacterial growth. This is likely why at least one randomized control trial that administered curcumin for two months found a 69% increase in bacterial species just from using curcumin alone. Again, likely due to the anti-inflammatory effects, less inflammation, healthier environment, and then healthier bacteria and fungus then grow. There was also one study looking at, can curcumin function as an antimicrobial? Can it actively kill bad bacteria? Now, I'll lead by saying the results here are not super strong. We do have a meta-analysis, so that's an impressive data point, looking at Helicobacter pylori or H. pylori, this bacteria that lives in the lining of the stomach mostly and can cause things like bloating and reflux and also ulcers. When combining curcumin with antibiotics, they found an increased clearance rate of H. pylori by 8%. So that's not a lot. It is something, but there does seem to be at least a modest antimicrobial impact. Okay, so then one of the best encapsulations of gastrointestinal symptoms, this sensitive gut, if you will, what we sometimes call a bacterial type gut. We'll be looking at the model of IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. So people have food sensitivities, they have bloating, pain, constipation, or diarrhea. Looking at curcumin in a clinical trial, they found that after two months of curcumin, 60% of people no longer had IBS. That's pretty remarkable for an inexpensive and very safe supplement. Now, part of this is almost for certain due to the anti-inflammatory impact that's being had in the gut. However, if you remember back to our conversation with Dr. Alex Ford, who is over at Leeds University, he shared this shift in irritable bowel syndrome thinking from a gut disorder to one that's being re-examined and recategorized as a gut brain disorder. So there's likely a component, a significant component of the brain in IBS. Now, it's not to say it's all in your head, but it is to say that regulation of inflammation, motility, and even nociception or pain signaling is being mediated centrally from the brain down to the gut. So it's probably not surprising that we see a different randomized control trial finding improvements in mood. So in this trial, they again gave curcumin versus placebo for two months. They found a 28% decrease in gastrointestinal symptoms. So pain, diarrhea, constipation, indigestion, and reflux. But look at this. They also found a 52% decrease in anxiety. This portrays that there's this interplay between the brain and the gut, and they're likely going to govern together. So if we have this anti-inflammatory impact, in this case, it suggests, given the fact that the reduction in anxiety was greater than the reduction in gastrointestinal symptoms, that some of this may truly flow from the brain down to the gut. One of the ways in which this may occur, this sort of brain-gut flow, connects back to a different series of studies that we've discussed in prior episodes, which found that either stressed or depressed patients had a higher inflammatory response to leaky gut. Essentially, the researchers here administered uh, directly to the blood LPS, lipopolysaccharide. This is part of the bacterial uh, membrane that leaks through leaky gut and elicits an inflammatory response. So they found that people with stress and depression had more of an inflammatory response to the particles that leak through during leaky gut. So it would make sense that if we're having a positive impact on what's going on in the brain, stress, depression, anxiety, that would lead to improvements in the gut 
because you're less reactive to the food particles that leak through if leaky gut is present. And we know a degree of permeability accompanies things like food reactivity, IBS, and just general gut symptoms. Along with this, it's also probably not surprising to see another either meta-analysis or randomized control trial, there's, there's a number of them here, finding improvements in memory, attention, and executive function. So again, wonderful outcomes from the anti-inflammatory effects that curcumin has. 